Greg Pond is our feature this evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. The mighty and wonderful. Give him a round of applause just right now. Right. Woo. And if I don't mind saying so, just look around the room for a minute and you go, geez, he can pack a house now, can't he? <laughs> so this is really this is really nice. I appreciate that. And that's why we have such a big second show, because well, we went through the first. All right, so. Now, Sally Love Saunders is also in the house, and without Sally Love Saunders and my going to a poetry event that she has hosted, I would never have met him, and he would have never have been here. So Sally Love Saunders is a person of influence in this whole situation. I want to thank her and give her a salute over there. Thank you so much. And uh, she did pass around a couple little flyers, and if you have those, that's fine. If you don't, we can figure that out later on. Anyway, so back to Greg Pond. The man has a voice. I love this voice. It's the kind of voice you feel, you say, you said, it's either like, it's analogous to warm bread that's, you know, just out of the oven, almost cool enough to slice, but not quite. So you sit there go, ah, there's that analogy. There's also like the very sharp-witted cutting edge, the scalpel that takes apart society's fabric and lets you see what's inside. Sometimes you don't like what you see inside. <laughs> and he can portray that very, very well. He can dissect the social cause and, and, and bring it to light. He's also funny. He's humorous. He takes objects and creates poems. And my favorite in that category is the one about uh, Lady Day, the, 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 the glass. Yeah. That, that just, yeah. ah, you know. So there's variety, there's depth, there's clarity, there's humor. In essence, there is a great poet that's going to be speaking here in a moment. So um, without further ado, give him a strong, wonderful welcome. Greg Pond. We knew you could do it. I'm, I'm nervous as usual, but that's part of the course. I've got some old poems, I've got some middle poems, and some new ones. And uh, I'm going to start off with a request that I was um, presented with, and I'm happy to comply. And this particular poem is a third in a series of letters that was written to an anonymous friend. And um, this particular one deals with um, the AIDS epidemic and it deals with family relations around holiday time, around the holiday table, and some of the tensions. It's entitled Dear You, Three. And this one is dedicated to Sally. Guess who? Bet you never thought you'd be hearing from me again. At least not so soon. Even though at best it's been a few blue moons since we've been in touch. And with so much going on, I often wonder what you have been going through too. The years now lived in lower doses find us in this time still reeling from a two-decade frame where too many who barely blinked at life got pulled to the other side. Many we loved didn't follow our script, didn't turn the next page with the rest of us, left on our own forever AIDS change. Survivors who remain to elevate the memories and validate the pain. Oh, the family, family's fine. All this time, still pretending not to know about me. But only superficially, you see. We just don't go there where discomfort has often appeared dressed as a careless comment or joke that <coughs> chokes conversation and makes holiday dinners slow to a crawl. For a while, at least. It's so easy to make excuses like, oh, it's so rare when we're all here and get to share and connect. And since guilt, denial, and fear take so much time to dissect, <laughs> sometimes it's better to just let the moment pass in benign neglect. 
or worse yet, laugh along in a futile attempt to diffuse or deflect the pain of low esteem so self-evident. It sweats my clothes, clings wet and cold to my own skin, around my own kin feeling naked and exposed, barely able to be discreet. Because it really matters to me what they see when they really look at me. Momentarily distracted by, please pass the peas. <laughs> the moment passes as a reprieve. Soon move through dessert and, and urge to join the guys for football, drinks, and lies while Sisters, cousins, and wives hit the kitchen to do their bit. Thank God little nephews and nieces practically pull me apart, pull me back in place while I rearrange my face and try to replace jigsaw puzzle pieces. And as for me, you'd think by now I'd seen just about enough, but here I am like every other fool like me still wishing, still hoping to fall in love, Greg. Thank you. Uh, is this one of your books? This is from um, Black and Blue, my second. First one was from uh, and this one is entitled Eddie New. After hours, jazz man, just as bad as he can be. Let not one note slip by while every horn guy blew a textured history. <laughs> Every fingered moment spent tickling ivory. Every song ever recorded in the key of C. Eddie knew them all, and even if he didn't, he could always recall someone they knew or played with at Smalls. Always some club, some set, some jam, even the personnel of every changing band. There was nothing about jazz he hadn't heard, Nothing he didn't know. Now he's gone off to critique the angels who play the late, late show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> who are we? We may distance ourselves from the crazy rhetoric, but not from the mirror that exposes and reflects who we really are as Americans <laughs> collectively, while we hide under a veil of decreasing civility. You know who we are. We are who he is, bigoted, greedy, homophobic, racist, selfish, cruel, vindictive, sexist, xenophobic, petty, bullish, narcissist. He is what we don't want to be, but is the face of our current society. He's a reflection in the mirror that we wish we didn't see. Since I decided to wear this dashiki, well, yes. might, might as well. Oh, Africa. Oh, nice. oh, Africa. It's been a long stream of days, but just to be clear, I still feel near, even though I'm oceans away. Long distance from you and thus from the cradle of life and truth. Am I destined to pay the price the seasoned man pays? when the innocence of youth is crippled with old age, and he reaches back Sankofa style to return to the black of his roots. Oh, Africa, 
It's been a long course of months from the source where all civilization began. The genesis of heaven and earth, plants, animals, and the birth of man. Now look what they've done to you. Brutalized your indigenous, staggered your economies, and ravaged your land. In the end, you've been treated the same by kin and enemy. Oh, Africa. It's been a long river of years since our forefathers first bathed in your waters. But as the global clock moves on, we now fear it's been too long and we've grown too strong in our Western ways to realize how far we've actually strayed from your shores, your sons and daughters, scattered across Caribbean within South Central North. American borders. Oh, Africa. After all these lost ages and miles of twisted history, what can we do to prove to you that we'll always be part of the diasporic tapestry? We can reverse the hands of time, but we can reestablish a connection that rings from continent to nation to community across ancestral lines. One that flows through our collective souls along the path of the conscious mind. Oh, Africa, we're destined to come back to you one day at a time. Speak. Oh. Your voice. I want to caress your voice with my fingers until the only choice left to you is to surrender willingly without force. When I deliver a kiss that lingers on your lips with tender breath and sexy thoughts, I want to touch your words with special gentleness Polish them like precious gems while they're cradled against my chest. Then hold them up to my ear so I can hear every note echoing from the back of your throat as you slowly sip the steam from your morning cup, whispering warm sounds in those dulcet tones. Thoughts of you and me alone, curled in a ball and all snuggled up and crazy in love with your voice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't own a storage unit. I never have, but I have lots of family members, friends, co-workers, acquaintances that have storage units. And I've heard all kinds of stories about them. So I thought, hmm, what would it be like to own a storage unit? <laughs> storage unit blues. <laughs> I got the storage unit blues. I'm paying rent for a room that I can't live in, filled with stuff I no longer need and probably won't ever use. I've had the storage unit since who knows when. And it's filled to the brim with books clothes, stacks of pictures, papers, rows of nicks and nacks, car tables, tchotchkes, and a bunch of crap that no matter how much I pray, hope, or wish some of it would shrink, it would still never fit because this rented closet is as big as my whole apartment. <laughs> now I know that most of this stuff eventually has to go, though instead of collecting less, I keep hoarding more and more. So much I should take inventory. So much I could open a store. I guess I feel a need to lean on memories, to cling to time-tested trinkets, sentiments, and long-held beliefs that though no longer may be relevant, are so hard for me to release. As if deciding to let them go would be like letting go of too much of me. My only hope 
is that my storage expansion will somehow miraculously slow while my living space magically grows another wing big enough to fit all the things this unit can no longer hold so I got the storage unit blues. Uh, I'm paying rent for a room that I can't live in, filled with stuff I no longer need and will probably never use. <laughs> Two more. Oh, you're good still. Don't worry. Everything's fine. Phoenix. I am Phoenix, rising from smoke and smoldering ashes, a soul survivor. The flames are lapping after me, but I truly believe if I keep ascending, this fire will never reach this bird on the wire unless I stop to breathe. So I continue to walk a tightrope towards the sun balanced on wings, held by strings, not wax, so that mine won't melt like Icarus, and my arms won't flap in futility while my feathers float to sea. I'll fly me to the moon and hitch a ride on heaven's breeze. Catch a current to carry me home if I happen to tire so I can rest my soul. Gonna fly so high that I won't get singed by the fire below or the inferno within. As the smoke climbs higher above the embers of anger, guilt, and rejection. See me soar above the pyre towards enlightenment and redemption. No longer a bird perched on a wire, but one who hovers far above the atmosphere where the moon and sun are lovers. I've been redirected, resurrected, reconnected, and inspired. Rising in the midst of this, I am Phoenix, soul survivor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to do that poem with Lady Day after this one. Oh, I know we have a bigger one. Oh, never mind. Okay, just kidding. That's all right. Uh, but anyway, uh, this last poem is dedicated to my brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community uh, around the world who, in many cases, are not allowed to live their lives. This particular poem takes place in Jamaica. And um, it, uh, it's entitled Batty. And for those who don't know, the term Batty Boy and Chichi Man are two derogatory terms for gay men. Batty. Down in Jamaica. They call us Batty Boy. We don't play baseball. We're not all that crazy. But they say our lifestyle defiles Anglican law. They feel them have a right to deride, arrest, beat, and mistreat I and I with club, sharp tongue, or fist when and whenever they wish. Trying to drive the devil out. Trying to knock some sense in. Until we fall on our knees, hang our heads, and repent our sins. But even then we never learn. So they proclaim, those who live in abomination, Bible and Rasta say, shall burn. What would it make to make what would it take to make them understand? Who I love or sleep with don't make me less a man. I want to be a woman, only make me human. But them don't understand. Them sing, come back to Jamaica. But they won't kill the chichi man. It tears me apart to 
hear how much hatred is harboring in hearts that swing the same waters our ancestors swam. Where activists become martyrs. Better hope it's not your son or daughter. Though we shall never forget those who gave their last breath seeking justice and liberty from a Kingston still clinging to some old British shit that I don't think any queen believes. My soul grieves for my brothers and sisters who can't live their lives free from the daily shame, the threats and violence perpetrated by brethren, reverend and priests who demand Christian compliance, but <laughs> with all due respect, they make an unholy alliance with the devil in their mind instead, twisting scripture to justify attitude that casts consenting adults as sinners for the crime of loving the same sex. Police and official, vex and turn their back so black can treat black like a European used to treat slaves. It's a shame. From Spanish town to Montego Bay, it's the same old homophobic rant and rage. Down in Trench Town, they warn, Batty boy, you better not slip, because if they ever see you swish, you'll wish you were never born. And if you have the nerve to say you were born that way, then you deserve the Almighty's wrath and scorn. In the morning, daylight come back to Jamaica. Dance reggae, drink rum, have fun and enjoy. Bring your wife, bring your children, bring your dollars, but don't bother bring no batty boy. Yeah. Woo!